What's up fellow gamers, Kent here with Corsby Gaming. This video is going to be a game review of The Outer Worlds, where I'll quickly cover the intro, go over some of the controls, inventory characters, dialogue, and combat. I'll also go over the pros and cons and wrap it up by giving you my general overall take of the game. So this game did come out last year, but I recently beat it and it's getting a new DLC, Peril on Gorgon, later this month, so I figured I'd do a review. Alright, so this game starts off with this Rick Sanchez looking fugitive waking you up from cryosleep, sticking you in an escape pod, and launching you to some planet. You subsequently exit your pod to find yourself alone and your guide as flat as a pancake. After exiting the pod, there's a short linear path that you'll take where the game introduces the basic controls of the game and eases you into it. It throws you into a little bit of really easy combat but then you're on your own as soon as you get through this intro part here. After getting through the intro, you come across this lovely ship, which is ironically named the Unreliable. You assumptively inherit the ship from the pancake back at your escape pod, and your adventure begins. Well, that is as soon as you make the repairs that the ship needs. Alright, so now we're going to go over the character and some of the menus here. The first one is skills, and each time you level up, you get points to allocate to whatever skill you want. Next is going to be perks. These are going to be just different power-ups every time you level up. Up to a certain point, you get another extra perk point. Um, then there's just going to be your general stat page, and then your reputations for each of the factions. Then we got the inventory here, we got our weapons first, so you're able to equip up to four different weapons, some of them are ranged, some of them are melee. After that we got our armor, so there are two slots for armor, one for the body and one for the headgear, which unfortunately is pretty limited. After that we've got the consumables, next is going to be the mods for your guns and ammo. And then we got the general items, and then there is also the quest items as well, and then junk. Lots and lots of junk. The next tab is your journal, where all your quests are kept track of. It separates them by the type of quest that they are, and makes the missions and storyline easy to follow. Then we got the map, which is pretty self-explanatory. After that, there's going to be two tabs for each of the companions that you've brought with you and the inventory that they have. So one thing that's really cool about this game is the solar system map and being able to jump around to different planets and stations from your ship. And then whenever you leave your ship, you're able to select two companions that you want to take with you and you have six different options on your companions once you've recruited them all. Each one is very fleshed out and has a unique personality as well as background. The dialogue with each one is extensive and they all have their own quest lines that can be completed. The main downside to the companions though is that nothing really separates them as far as combat. They all do the same thing pretty equally, help you kill enemies. There are quest lines that contradict each other, and depending on how you navigate the conversation will determine which one you complete, or if you can tactfully complete both. Not all conversations can end diplomatically though, and that brings us to the combat. Ripped in your ear, but as far as I'm concerned, you've been compromised. Jack, yes, yes, yes. So the combat in this game is very well done, the fighting is very smooth and precise, there is a fun variety of unique enemies, but there is one huge problem I came across. The combat was far too easy. Rarely did I ever even bother to use the abilities like the tactile time dilation or the single use power ups, it was just easier to keep shooting and mow down the enemies. Yes, there are harder difficulties, but I felt like they just made the game more tedious and less enjoyable. Being required to eat food and drink water and sleep on the ship is not my idea of a difficulty increase. So I can't do a review on this game and not mention the obvious comparisons between it and the Fallout games. If you like the Fallout games, then I would certainly recommend The Outer Worlds for you, but one thing should be kept in mind. 
The scale of this game is significantly less than the recent Fallout games. When I played The Outer Worlds, I completed it in just over 30 hours, and the first 20 I spent trying to complete every single side quest. So to conclude this review, I'm going to give you a few quick pros and cons in my rating of the game. The pros will be the environment and the atmosphere of this game and the incredible immersive experience that it is, as well as the dialogue that has so much depth and uniqueness. The cons are going to be the ease of the game, which I've already covered, the junk that's just laying around all over the place, seriously there's so much just useless crap laying around, and then last is the load screens, the infernal load screens. They last forever and there is so much fast travel that's done to complete the quest that the, a large amount of time is spent just waiting for the game to load. Overall though, this game was a lot of fun for me, even if completing it was a bit of a chore, the rating I would give it is an 8.1 out of 10. That's all for this video guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this in the future, please hit the subscribe button. Hope you all have a great day, I'll catch you next time.